Hello, everyone. My name is Melinda. It's my great honor to be here to present my research in the collaboration with Professor Jonathan Webster. The title of today's presentation is The Texture and Architecture of Online Philanthropic Fundraising Discourse, a Systemic Functional Analysis of Charity Websites. My presentation will include the following four parts, introduction, research method, research findings, and discussion. Now, let's look at this one by one. First, I would like to introduce some background information. Philanthropy, from its Greek roots, means love of mankind. In modern times, this word is interpreted as the practice of helping the poor and the needy, especially by giving money. In the world of philanthropy, there are the needy or recipients of funding, the givers of funding, the helper or channels of funding, which are the nonprofit organizations. Since most charities work require much effort from the public, the word philanthropy is connected with raising money, and the concept and practice of philanthropic fundraising are becoming increasingly popular. In the current digital years, online fundraising as an essential part of our organization's plan contributes a lot to promoting the organization's through various channels. According to statistics in Hong Kong, the number of test-free charities has risen sharply to over 8,000 in 2016. Donations to charities reached nearly 12 billion Hong Kong dollars in 2014. Also, Hong Kong ranked number 21 in its proportion of donors. Thus, based on the above background, we know that the need to investigate online philanthropic fundraising has been greater in Hong Kong. The development of charities and fundraising has drawn attention from academia, in particular, scholars from linguistics have actively explored the language used in fundraising. Their analysis can be located in two general dimensions, written text and digital discourse. Earlier research mainly started from written fundraising tests, such as printed letters, advertisement, and a report grant proposal, etc. There are relevant studies from systematic uh, systemic functional linguistics, genre study, cognitive linguistics, and cross-cultural communication. As a result of digitalization, the exploration is expanded to the digital world, focusing on online fundraising discourse. For example, bite-sized pages on Facebook, non-profit organizations' website, and online platform for crowdfunding with two main approaches, which are critical discourse analysis and genre studies. To summarize, three main approaches are across the written and digital dimensions. First, the genre study pays much attention to outlining linguistic conventions and mood structure, yet stresses less on language function and grammar. The critical approach acknowledges the action and the new action between language and the social cultural environment, but a more detailed explanation, especially within the language itself, is not given. Left, which is the systemic functional approach, it has clearly explained how language functions to make meaning and interact with its context. But current SF studies on from recent discourse, especially online, are so real to build up. With the above research gap, this study applies the main theoretical abstractions in SFL into analysis, such as stratification and organization, test and contest. As the figure illustrates, a tri-stratified system with a realization relation is maintained outside the language among the context of culture, context situation, and language. And inside the language, where language and where speaking and re writing realize more than 
world in your life has meaning. Another new clear idea in SFW is that here is the three meta functions, including the aberrational, interpersonal, and the textual meta function. With the above background, this research aims to fill the current research gap in applying the SF approach to analyze online um, philanthropy from within this course and thus propose three research questions here. Those type of fundraising back pages are most favored. What are the um, textual properties on those pages? How online fundraising discourse is organized in its structure? To solve this question, you know, research method produced first data selection. In the present state, in the present study, all charities mentioned were on the list of charitable institutions and trusts. As of um, 2020, 9,177 charities were on the list. There are three criteria for the data selection. Whether the charity has an official website, whether its website is in English, and whether there's a donate page on their website. After selection, um, there were 700 99 institutions left. And in Hong Kong, a charity must be established exclusively, exclusively for charitable purposes. And the charitable purposes were classified into four hats, among which the charities established for the advancement of religion have the highest percentage. So finally, we selected 167 religion institutions. After the data selection, let's move to the data collection. First, the research focus was centered on the fundraising back pages, except the donate page. To collect target fundraising back pages, Google Advanced Search was used to search for web pages with keywords like donate and donation, and the latest updated date. In this way, among the 167 religious charities, it was found that 55% has other types of web pages for fundraising, nearly half were news pages and charity project pages in the second. But due to the high time sensitivity of news pages, those only updated within one year from 2019 to 2020 were archived. And the word count range from 100 to 600 words um, was also cited for both two web page types. So finally, we got 18 web pages with over 500 words in the news web page database, and another 18 web, web pages with over 7,000 words in the charity project pages um, database. So now please let me um, show you a random sample number one in the news page database to demonstrate how I analyzed it uh, online from using this course in detail. First, I extracted the main body of the font using this course and put it into the test database for class division. Then the archived this course was analyzed mainly on the class level in the different test templates. These templates cover various systems in language and different subsystem choices under each system. For example, the intrusivity and voice, logics, mood and modality, C and RST elements. The total um, 36 uh, web pages in the present study were analyzed in this way. By summarizing the textual features and organizational structure, we can frame the fundraising test into a certain context or situation. Now let's look at the funding scheme from the research. First, in terms of multifunction realization. So the trustivity analysis, a clear preference for the material process was shown on both news and the charity project pages, as the figure illustrated here. And also from the word cloud, 
we mean that the top five most frequently used verb in the material process were help, provide, donate, support, and make. And make. Described it by Handy as abstract blind and feminine actions. Except for transitivity, the voice system is another part to discuss. The pie chart here reflected different voice types on the um, font raising web pages, where the active and middle voices were the overwhelming majority, which made um, the ER roles of we and you participated in the process more prominent. In terms of the larger community, First, among the total 496 crosses, 48% of crosses were standing alone as a simple cross, and 52% in cross complex. Looking at the um, taxes and logic personality relations, I have found a hypertactive enhancement was the most favored type, and among them, clauses of purpose counts for the most. Besides, looking at the um, non finite verbs in the clause of purpose, I find um, the top five most frequent used verbs will also help, support, donate, make, and provide. Regarding the interpersonal meaning, in terms of the clause news type, 13% of clauses in the foundation discourse were in the uh, impavity mood. The action demanded not only to donate, but also click, click, come, and join. The request for giving money occupies less than one quarter of the total and were expressed in a very implicit and um, ambiguous way, um, such as let's make a difference, support us, and help us. He says, um, the in, in, interesting engine please appeared 28 times, which awakened the strong demand expressed by the inhabitant mood to be a real request. Most importantly, a pattern has uh, gradually shown from simultaneous choices in terms, subject, and cross mode. At the beginning of the test, a past event happens to people in need. The event could be material, for example, the outbreak of a disease or verbal, such as a speech. Then the tense shifted to present and with we as subject. After the present statement, the tense switches to the future and the mood remains the clarity. Then comes one clause that is not the clarity, but imperative, please. Brings a sudden change in the relationship of writer to reader. The writer shifting to the goods and service mode of I am asking you to do something, thus becoming a request. Modality is another aspect of interpersonal meaning, which can be manifested in two ways modalizations and modulation. Paper 5 illustrates that. And raising test of favors in relation of the modulization. Within the modulation, um, modulated clauses expressing the medium of the fusion were preferable. You was the most frequent subject, and um, that's the commands addressed. And can was the only finite module operators in the database, um, which gave module responsibility to the subjects. And looking at the verbs after come, I find the action that the subject was able to do or permitted to do were also the same top verbs in the material process. Last, regarding the texture meaning, in the same RAM structure I found um, in the marked topical theme, substantial theme counted for the most and 73%, and the rest 27% was a processing. A substantial themes as the clause initial element were used to set the task to narrate like an orientation. 
processes as another marked public scene we are presented in three forms. Non-restrictive relative process, sanctuary sentences, and bullet point in which actions were put in the first place of each box. Another aspect of textual medium is the information system, which shares a close semantic relation with the theme system. Through the semantic progression, we could get clue on how information flows. Among three major types of semantic progression, continuous semantic progression was quite outstanding, with the same thing being repeated. Besides, the linear structure was also quite common. For example, um, in sample number six of the charity project that page database, the information clearly flowed from old to new and new became old. So, so far, the lexical grammatical analysis of the text was complete. Yet, interpreting a text requires understanding the meaning of individual discourse components and how the meaning of these components are connected. So, let's see from the architecture of the text. A test consists of functionally and significant steps, and each test spans contribute some meaning to the whole test. So together, this span assembles, assembles the test rhetorical structure. So this research uses several assumptions underlying rhetorical structure theory, or RST, such as organizations, coherence, and relation compositions, etc. So let's now look again at sample number one and discuss its structure. So first, from figure five, we can see the nuclear unit of the entire test was class number one, which reflects from within that page's general purpose is to invite the readers to join the charity's friendly through monetary contribution. And supporting clause number one was a motivation um, satellite covering the remaining of the test. This test span consists of a nuclear claim and a means satellite. Within the span of two to six, there were three statements from uh, for the nucleus in clause number two. Clause number seven to clause number eight shared a means relation with clause number two to clause number six. Clause number seven indirectly provided the way of donation, and clause number eight uh, presupposed that uh, our readers would donate by saying thanks in advance for your contribution as the last effort to motivate other readers to give money. So one of the outcomes of RST analysis is identify comprehensive locus of effect and the centrality as the whole test level. So looking at the two databases, I have found that um, 61% of the comprehensive locus of effect was located within a motivation relation. But instead of directly motivating the readers to donate, over half of the statements were expressed very vaguely, besides 82% um, of the motivation was in the empowering mood, but half were told as an intensity which uh, was please placed as the first. Another consequence of the test structure labeled um, relational proposition, which means relation can communicate themselves, whether there are explicit signals or not. Like in sample number one, there were no explicit signals, but through lexical devices like you know, collocations, the coherence of this test can still be interpreted. So last, among all um, 36 tests, only 21 types of relations appeared. And this uh, highly recurrent relations indicates the foundation test is often organized through elaboration, joint, motivation, relational result, and background. 
So finally it comes to the conclusion. This research investigated online philanthropic fundraising discourse based on the net function principles by revealing how investors making them distinct the patterns of choices additionally interpersonally and textually. Besides the structure of the fundraising test has been explored, revealing the centrality and the common generations. Additionally, we also find how this systemic choices frame from within test into a specific context of situation. Compared with the spoken discourse, the found within test on the back page is in fact deliberately composed of written language. However, in contrast with carefully written discourse, found within discourse has more personal flavor. And last, compared with marketing discourse, the unlike and philanthropic fundraising discourse is still best nature for philanthropic purpose. So given the above, we can borrow hand discourse of mixed characteristics to comments the online philanthropic fundraising test and have a more precise expectations of this genre. So this is what we want to share today. Thanks very much for your attention.